Okay, in this video I'm going to look at a price ceiling and analyze what happens. So between the last video and this one I have upgraded my little drawing program and so we'll see if this does a better job or if it's just frustrating. So we already looked at these same equations 12 minus 2 thirds Q and uh, for the demand and price equals 2 plus Q for the supply and we calculated what the producer surplus and the consumer surplus and all those things were in a free market and so in this one we are going to assume that we're not allowed to get to that free market we're not allowed to get to that uh, price the uh, equilibrium price of eight dollars here and we're not going to be able to get to the equilibrium quantity of six units because the government has passed some sort of law and in this case the law is going to be a price ceiling now a price ceiling picture the ceiling coming down on top of you and crushing you uh, a ceiling starts high you can think about it that way and it comes down pushing the equilibrium price down and so a price ceiling of four dollars let me draw in where that price ceiling is going to be here and okay going across price ceiling of four dollars to focus our eyes on what is going to happen here what is the quantity demanded going to be on the demand curve at a price ceiling of four dollars at a price of four dollars people would want to buy 12 units the quantity demanded would be 12 but on the supply curve what is the quantity supplied going to be only two units and so which of these is more important the quantity people want to buy or the quantity that actually will be produced I would argue that it's the quantity that will actually be available for purchase this two units because even though people want the fifth the sixth the seventh unit it's not available and so all of these units from the third through the twelfth unit are irrelevant for the most part unless you just want to say that there is going to be a shortage of 12 minus 2 or a shortage of 10 units but since uh, the 2 is the limiting quantity it's the quantity that is really going to drive what happens for the rest of the analysis let's draw a line at a quantity of 2 and that line is going to tell us that nothing to the right of a quantity of two no one's going to buy it no one's going to sell it and so over here to the right is mostly irrelevant so what is going to happen at a quantity of two well let's start with the uh, well it's not the equilibrium price but the price will be four due to the law so the price will be four the quantity will be two because there will be two actually supplied so let's look at the total revenue total revenue is price of four times a quantity of two and let me just outline that total revenue box here in green and so total revenue is two times four or eight so total revenue is eight dollars now what's the next thing we might want to calculate well I usually go for consumers surplus next where is the consumers surplus going to be you can always find the consumer surplus below the demand curve and above the price the consumers are paying and so the uh, consumers surplus is going to be in this area below the demand curve and above the price they're paying of four dollars so it's going to be all of that area it's not a triangle not a rectangle so we're going to have to actually figure out what uh, this area is by dividing this odd shaped figure this odd quadrilateral into a rectangle and a triangle and so 
where the triangle and the rectangle get divided is going to be somewhere right around here. So let me change uh, color here so we can see what I'm drawing right around in here. Okay. So that's where the uh, triangle and the rectangle sort of part ways. Now, with how I've drawn this, even though my lines are pretty straight, I can't tell exactly what price level that uh, point is at. And so we need to figure out what it is. and Because we're going to need to calculate the area of the rectangle and then the area of the triangle. And so we know the area of the rectangle is going to be the base, which is 2, that quantity of 2. And the height is going to be from $4 up to whatever this mystery price is here. Now how are we going to figure that out? Well, since the demand equation tells us what the price level is for each quantity, here, let me write that down. Okay, so here we can see the demand equation, P equals 12 minus 2 thirds Q that we have here in red. If we plug in the quantity of 2, it will tell us what that point on the demand curve is where the rectangle shifts over to become the triangular top part there. So if we plug in 2 uh, for Q, 12 minus 2 thirds Q, uh, 2 thirds times 2 is 4 thirds. So 12 minus 4 thirds is going to give us that that price where the uh, split happens is $10.67 or 10.6666667. So 10.67. So now we can find the area of this bottom part here uh, two times. The height is 1067 minus 4 or 667. So the yellow part, the area is uh, 1334. So 1334 on the bottom. And the area of the top is 1 half times 2 on the bottom times the height is $12 minus 1067 or $1.33. And so the top part, the area is $1.33 on the top there, that little triangle. So if we add those two together, we're going to get the consumer surplus of $14.67. So let me write that down. Consumer surplus equals $14.67. Okay. Now, once we know the consumer surplus and the total revenue, we can add those two together to get what we call the total benefit, which is the um, largest amount that someone would be willing to pay in order to get these two units. So 1467 plus 8 is 2267. So total benefit is going to be 22 dollars and 67 cents. So I'm still having a little bit of trouble writing with this uh, mouse here. 2267 total benefit. The most somebody would be willing to pay to get two units. Okay, now what I usually do is, is I look at that total revenue uh, rectangle and split it into two parts. The bottom is the variable cost. The top is the producer surplus. So let me zoom in on that so we can see it better. Okay, now that we're good and zoomed in, uh, if the green total revenue rectangle is 8, then we need to divide it into variable costs on the top and, sorry, variable costs on the bottom and producer surplus on the top. So this purple triangle up top is the producer surplus which is going to be one half times two is the base of the uh, of the purple triangle and two is also the height. So the producer surplus one half times two times two is going to be equal to two and the variable cost is the remainder of this eight dollars. Uh, variable costs on the bottom must be the 8 minus the 2, so variable costs 
are going to be six. So that is a six dollars in variable costs on the bottom, two dollars in producer surplus on top. Now that we have everything calculated, the only thing left is to analyze what's what's happening here and to note that this triangle that is left over here, if you compare th this shape, producer surplus and consumer surplus in the previous lectures, uh, all that used to be part of total surplus, but now this part is deadweight loss. Now there are two ways to calculate deadweight loss, and one is just the area of the black triangle, which will be one half times 667 times 4, or another way that is just as good is to, to look at how big that total surplus would have been and subtract off what the total surplus is in this case.